you know, I was looking at these stories coming out of the West Bank. And there was this small village in the West Bank. It was called Wadi es Sik. And the inhabitants of Wadi es Sik were kicked out of their homes. By who? By Jewish extremists. Now, of course, the Jews, uh, the Jewish lunatics, the settlers, they can do no wrong. They're the heroes. If you watch John Hagee uh, and if you watch all of the Kufi, the, the Christians United for Israel events, if you look at the uh, the Night to Honor Israel events that happen every year in uh in John Hagee's church, I mean, what do they say, right? They say, oh, it's, that Israel is fighting terrorists and all that. And you would think that the Jews can do no wrong. Right? If you look at these types of events, if you look at the type of narrative that is taught in these events, you would think that the Jews can do no wrong. Palestinians are all terrorists. Who cares? Blah, 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 blah. Well, I was looking at what was going on in this village, and the final, the last inhabitants were being kicked out from their homes, and there were these two employees for the Palestinian Authority, the PA, which is basically the Israeli-controlled government that's in the West Bank. And they were there to make sure that the last residents of the village uh, were were okay as they were uh, as they were leaving. And as these two employees were exiting the village, there were these uh, soldiers coming in, and these soldiers were settlers. They were fanatic settlers, but nonetheless, they were, they were soldiers. They were members of the IDF. Well, the two Palestinian guys, they saw these settler soldiers coming over to them, and they started backing up their car, and they started going, they headed back to the village, and the settlers started following them. Well, one of the Palestinian guys, his name was Abu Hassan. Abu Hassan called up this commission. And the way that it works is that Palestinians don't really call directly the the Israeli security forces. They contact a commission, which then contacts the Israeli security forces. So he called up this commission and said that he was being chased by settlers. Uh, And the settlers got out of their car and they took these Palestinians out of their vehicle put them on the ground, and gave them a beating, stomped their heads. Well, it was then said that Abu Hassan was arrested years ago on the charges of stone-throwing and murder. But if the guy was really a murderer, why is he out on the street as an employee for the PA? Anyway, they searched the guy's car, they found his bag, and they found... Uh, in the in the car, they found an axe. Supposedly, they found an axe, and then in his bag, they found knives. Abu Hassan later said that those items were put into his car and in, into his bag. And he said, "I called up the commission." And he t- there was an Israeli soldier there, and he told the Israeli soldier, "I called up the commission. I called up the commission to let them know." that I'm here to let them know what's going on. If I was planning a terrorist attack, I wouldn't be calling the commission. I wouldn't call up the police. How does that make any sense? Well, that didn't matter. And these settler lunatics took him and they took uh, two other Palestinians and they took them, they blindfolded them and they took them to this abandoned building. And they said that the floor of this building was just covered in animal dung, and uh, the Palestinians believed that this place was used to hold cattle because the floor was just covered in dung and crap. And they gave these Palestinian guys this horrendous beating. They blindfolded them, and they beat them, and they beat them, and they beat them over and over and over again. And eventually they urinated on them. And that's that, that, that is just, it's so obviously sick. They urinated on them. They took their blindfolds off. They urinated on them. And then they took Abu Hassan. They forced him on the ground. And they began to try to shove a stick up his anus. And Abu Hassan said that he fought for dear life. He fought for dear life so that they wouldn't stick this stick up his anus. And they kept trying and trying, and he he squirmed, and he torqued, and he moved, and he did every movement he could. He did every movement he could with his body so that they wouldn't shove this stick up his anus. And after a while, they gave up because he just did not want to be violated. But that's how evil these soldiers are. 
Not all of them. I'm not, I'm not saying all these Israeli soldiers are this way, but that's how evil these particular soldiers are. That they were trying so hard to humiliate, to rape, and sexually violate a man. But these people are for God. They're for God, right? These settlers, they're religious. These are the ones, that, I mean, this is why I say, the secular Israelis have a better chance at finding Christ, finding the true Messiah of the Jews, than the fanatics of Israel do. The fanatics of Israel, a lot of them are a lost cause. And they're so religious and zealous, but they will do sick things like this, sick things like trying to rape a man. It's demonic. It's absolutely demonic. And it reminds me of what Josephus said. Josephus said that there were these zealots, and there was, there was, there was an actual group in, in ancient Judea who were known as zealots, and these people were the most fanatical for the law, mo the most fanatical for the law. But Josephus tells us that during the Roman-Jewish war, it was the zealots who became sodomites. And he describes zealots running around the city of Jerusalem in women's clothing, in women's clothing, murdering other Jewish people. So out of all the people of ancient Judea, it was the zealots who became the most degenerate. They were not only murderers, but they were degenerates. They were debased sadists. And you see this very demonic spirit possessing the Jewish zealots of our time. And that reminds me, not too long after these Palestinians were arrested, well, after they beat these men, urinated on them, and then attempted to sodomize one of them with a stick, they took these men out of this abandoned building, and then they just dropped them drop them somewhere. They just dump them somewhere. Then they took a photograph of them and they posted the photograph on the internet and they said, "What?" and what did they say? They said, oh, we found three terrorists in the West Bank and we arrested them. We caught them. Well, well, hold on. If they were terrorists, then why did you release them? Why did you just, why did you just dump them in the street? Why did you dump them off the side of the road somewhere? Some, some place. It looks like they dumped them in the boonies somewhere. And then they deleted the photo. And the commander who was involved in this was ousted from his position. And not too long after these Palestinians were arrested, a group of Israeli Jewish activists were arrested. A, a group of... It, the article didn't say they were Jewish. It said that they were Israeli, but I'm going to assume that at least some of them were Jewish uh, because of what was told to them. They came to Wadi Asik to help the inhabitants because they knew that they were being oppressed by the settlers. They came to Wadi Asik and they were arrested by these settlers and some of them were beaten. These are Israelis. Israeli citizens, and they were beaten by other Israelis. And these settler sickos told these activists that they were traitors to Israel, that they were traitors to the Jewish people. And that's what indicates that these activists were Jews. And they told these Jewish activists, we want to kill every single one of you. Oh, how I wish we could kill every one of you. And one of them said, I wish I could kill all of you Jewish leftists, all of you Israeli leftists, just like King David killed all of Amalek. And so what does this story tell us? It tells us that in Israel you have this genocidal, murderous desire, this genocidal, murderous, racist spirit that exists within Israel. It is demonic, it is violent, murderous, and it is also degenerate, sexually degenerate. And it also tells us that there is this desire within Israel, within Israel's far-right extremist circles, whatever you want to call them, 
that wants to murder every Jew that disagrees with them. So they talk about Hitler. They say, oh, Hitler tried to kill all the Jews. Well, Hitler wanted to kill all the Jews because to him, the Jews were communists. A lot of them were communists. The right-wing Jews, the far-right lunatic Jews in Israel, they want to kill every left-wing or liberal Jew because they disagree with them. They want to do their own holocaust of a particular political demographic of Jews in Israel. And what happened at the time of Josephus? You had the fanatical Jews wanting to butcher all the Jews who did not want a war with Rome. And the fanatical Jews wanted to butcher all of those Jews because they saw them as enemies of the temple because they believed that if they did not oust out the Romans, the Romans would have desecrated or would have taken over or destroyed their temple. They wanted to protect their temple from the Romans. And so they saw the Jews who did not want war with Rome as enemies of the temple. And what do we see today? We see the fanatics wanting to make a third temple, and we see the lunatic evangelicals of America backing them. And they want to build a third temple. They want to oust out all of the Arabs. They want to make Israel into, an, into a really a pure Jewish ethnostate. And they want to establish a theocracy. And who would be the biggest enemies to that? It wouldn't be just the Arab minority. It would be also the political moderates in Israel. And they want to get rid of all of those people. The world is losing its mind.